99X, it's the morning X. Barnes, Leslie, gonna bring it down, Leslie, just for a second, because uh, we have yet to talk about what's going on in the world because we don't really get into politics here. We get into entertainment, and that's what we do. But this is so massive that uh, we have to talk about what's going on in Israel right now. And, and there's some audio I want to share with you, some different things going on in the media, in sports, in entertainment that are all tying through to this horrible situation. It's uh, it's unbelievable. And, you know, and we don't really talk a lot about news, but this is affecting everyone. It And when you open up your news feed or, or anything, it, it looks like an apocalypse. And it's very, it's sad. It's tragic. What's happening it, it's almost hard to just even talk about it. Did you see the um, Amari Stoudemire comments? Yes. He, you know, converted to Judaism and spent several years playing basketball in Israel. And he woke up to this news and just did what you shouldn't do, which is hit record, I guess, if you want right, to right. You know, stay out of the waves. But I want to play you this clip. It's one minute, and then I'll tell you what he said when he you know came back around yes i woke up man this morning with some disturbing news out of israel that hamas kidnapping children putting them in cages killing women killing the elderly that's some cowards that's cowardly and for all y'all black lives matter who ain't saying nothing well let me figure out exactly what happened before i say anything you figure out what it ain't never been cool to kidnap kids and put them in cages. It ain't never been cool to kill women and, and elderly. Never been. No matter where you from, what you represent, what tribe you for, it don't matter. There ain't never been no cool. There ain't never been none that nobody supported. And then you go and hide and put the kids in front of you as a barricade. That's some coward shit. All you politicians who always have something to say on the contrary, I see you. Fuck you. All you Black Lives Matter people who always had something to say and always supported everything else and you quiet now, f*** you too. Only place in the world where I can go and study tour and eat kosher food. Only place in the world. Some coward dog, and all y'all support it, f*** you. Oh my mama, we don't, we don't respect none of y'all for that. Peace. Man, you could just see the passion also in his voice though when he was saying those things. That's one of those things where you just wake up and you just turn on the microphone. I mean, he, yeah. this is just coming from his heart. Well, he apologized, kind of. He said, quote, I recognize that in a moment of passion that there is a better mm-hmm. way that I can communicate with my emotions about the conflict. I pray that the parties involved are able to find a resolution. He said, quote, I pray for the people of Israel. I pray for the people of Palestine. I stand with humanity. Mm-hmm. And he addressed the Black Lives Matter thing also. He said, to Black Lives Matter and the politicians, I recognize that it is everyone's choice if they want to speak about the conflict and that while I may want people to say more that there's a better way that I can communicate and to make it clear at the end he said quote this is not an apology but he well I'm glad he made that statement though yeah again because he's he's standing up for humanity look it's the passion if you can't get your mind into what is happening over right now over there right now I don't know how human you are because seeing these pictures nonstop and the you know it's just escalating escalating and escalating and everyone's worried now about what's going to happen when it goes back the other way i mean there's just so many things still to come from this and there's so many people that are you know commenting on it and again i do feel like he woke up in this moment of passion i know he came back and kind of did a, an apology but at the end of the day we're talking about human lives here and it's, it's tragic on both sides. I mean, we're talking about, think about yourself being at whatever music festival. We're talking about people yes. being gunned down, civilians at a music festival, families being ripped apart, kids, as you heard, being thrown into cages. I mean, dude, just trying to wrap your head. I mean, talk about appreciating your freedom. Of course. Professionals on the television, John Kirby... Yes. Um, struggled, a spokesperson for the National Security Council who's been consistently briefing the press with updates on American hostages was interviewed by Jake Tapper on Monday and this is a guy who was seeing probably every image coming out of there and he had a a tough time I uh, 
<clears throat> I, it, I'm sorry, it's, it's very, <clears throat> excuse me, very difficult to look at these images, Jake, uh, it, it, and the, the, the human cost. And these are human beings, they're family members, they're friends, they're loved ones, cousins, brothers, sisters. Yeah, it's difficult, and I apologize. He shouldn't apologize. I mean, the guy is right there seeing it all. That's what I'm saying. It's it's really hard to look at, for any of us to look at these images. We're talking about innocent, innocent people being slaughtered. Slaughtered. Can you imagine being Lester Holt, who is reporting now from over there? Ah. Like, I mean, Delta just ended flights coming out of Tel Aviv, I think, two I days ago. That. It was like, yeah. But boy, I got to get Lester over there. Like that, for me, that's the moment when you go to the green screen. You know what I mean? I mean, that, oh, yeah. I know it's authentic, but yeah. I mean, okay, Lester, pack up. We're sending you over. Mm-hmm. That's scary stuff because they, they are not discriminating in who they are killing. And, and this is, that's, I think, what makes it so hard for people to watch. Of course, we're desensitized to the battle images but civilians, little kids, f- beautiful families. Ooh. You too addressed it Sunday night. And it, yeah, I, I knew that they would just knowing, you know, Bono's history and I didn't, about peace. But I didn't know to what level, though. You know what I mean? I know. How do you get into that in an upbeat concert? I thought he did it brilliantly. And it gave me chills to hear him change the lyrics in the song. In the light of of what's happened in Israel and Gaza, uh, a song about nonviolence seems somewhat ridiculous, even laughable. But our prayers have always been for peace and and for nonviolence. So, but our hearts. And our anger, you know where that's pointed. So sing with us. And those, those beautiful kids of that music festival. Early morning, October 7, as the sun is rising, the desert sky stars of david they took your life but they could not take your pride wow you know and he really got choked up talking about that music festival too yeah that was um, well you know, done. festival of music and peace well done we're thinking about you know the big jewish community here in atlanta and just hope that this comes to an end this is not a political statement this is a human statement It's just awful. The Morning X with Barnes and Leslie, 99X.